What's going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in this series we are going to be starting a 2D Endless Runner tutorial. Now what we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to be setting up a, um, a new 2D URP. You don't have to set up a 2D URP, you can just do the 2D built-in if you want. However at the end of this series we're going to be prettifying our game by adding post-processing, shadow casters and some other stuff um, which you'll probably need URP for so choose either 2d or 2d urp and then just name your project and hit create project i'm going to be using uh, unity 20 22.3.4 f1 it's an lts release so you don't have to worry about it being um end of life or anything like that this this is a supported version so what we're going to do is just hit create project and wait for unity to build that project so while Unity loads for our 2D Endless Runner project, what I just want to say is throughout this series, we're going to be setting up character movement with a rigid body. Um, we're going to be getting an obstacle spawner and also a coin spawner, which we'll go into more detail when we get to it. We're going to have some in-game UI for the score and obviously the coins you've collected. We're going to have a game loop, which obviously has the uh, when you lose the game, if you want to replay the game, and obviously to start the game when you first lost on there'll be a high score system throughout this which we will also implement a save and load uh, feature which will save to json or even binary whatever one people to choose let me know down below what you want to see and that will allow us to uh basically build uh, well basically save and load data to our game and then at the end we're going to be using some uh, post processing shadow casters and a bunch of other stuff to make our game look really pretty with okay guys so it has now loaded up and I just want to start off by dropping in the sprite we're going to be using for our game now I said I was going to use basic geometry and that is true our, our little character here although he's tiny let's let's scale him up let's go to our box boy on the right here i'm gonna send by 16 by 6 or well 16 pixels unit uh he's gonna have no point filter and no compression because he's only 16 by 16 let's drop him in now and there you go you can see our little box boy here isn't he adorable he is just box boy um all these assets and by all of them i literally mean the box boy will be available with the source code on my patreon so if you're a patreon member you can actually get access to all of the source code for my future and previous tutorials such as the mini golf and the uh, tower defense tutorial and the endless runner now this will be available in lesson so each on the patreon you'll be able to download the source code by lesson so if you only need want to go to a certain point you can i just clicked the wrong thing delete box boy there um, but without further ado, let's actually get on with the video. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up a ground plane for our player. So what I want to do is go to 2D objects, sprites, and create a square, which we're just going to call ground. We're going to put this at what is our camera. So what we want to check is the projection, which is 5. So something like minus 5 should do it. We could probably put 4.5 if we want it to actually sit um, a bit better the x we could put like something like 20 we want this to be quite a long path so in game you can see it here um and let's also go to our camera for now and just make the scene like a, gr a dark gray color something like that for now we'll be switching these colors up later to match the style of our game when we prettyify it i just want to make it easy to see also how does box boy look in this scene yeah, that's good enough for now. We'll tweak all this soon. So the next thing we want to do now we've got a ground is we want to actually set up a box collider for it. So we just want to add a box collider 2D. That's all we need on this. And then we want to create a new layer. So go up to the layers tab, click add layer, and let's hit the ground layer. Now I'm just for convenience going to set up a player layer. We don't necessarily need the player layer, but I'm going to add the player layer, which is very hard to say multiple times in a row. Now go back to our ground object. What we want to do is select the ground. Next, we want to actually set up our player. So this is all done. Let's also uh, close these tabs up here. So next up, what we want to do is create our um, create our player. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an empty game object. I'm just going to call player. I'm going to reset to the middle, and I'm actually going to turn off the camera gizmo and the global gizmo. Uh, just so we don't have to look at those screens 
and we're going to turn off the light 2D just so we have can actually see our player in the background and then we're going to get box boy and we're going to drag him underneath our player as the sprite there you go so we want this top player to act as our um basically the the main component but we may want to tweak and uh, stretch out our box boy at some point to mess around with the scale and we don't want to do that and also mess around with everything else so what we want to do on here is do add the box collider to our sprite that will make sure it fits around his um uh sprite correctly um we can also rename this to graphics if you want to make it easier to read or gfx for graphics effects um, and then on our player, we want to add a rigid a rigid body 2D. We're going to make his gravity scale 5, so he falls a lot quicker. We're going to put his collision detection to continuous, and we do not want any rotation on our player. So we're going to just tick that. We also want no X movement on our player. Now, you're probably thinking, wait, why aren't we going to be moving him across the screen to, uh, for an endless runner? Well, most endless runners don't actually move the player. They move objects towards you, and that's what we're going to be doing in this series. We'll make the objects come towards him to make it look like the player is actually moving when he's not, because he doesn't necessarily move anywhere from this camera position, and it keeps everything within the uh, bounds of our game. So what we want to do now we have this is let's just position him at something like minus 3.5. That should put him on the ground. And on the X, let's just set it to like minus 4, 5. Minus 5 should be good. So if we go in our games, he'll be there. No, you know, let's move him back to minus 6. That's much better. So now he'll be here and objects will be coming from the right side of the screen towards our player, which will be able to jump over. Also, we created a player layer, so we might as well use the player layer. So we are just going to select the player layer for our player. We're going to apply it to both um, him and his graphics down here. We also probably want to attach the player tag to our player because we're probably going to be doing collision detections or on collision enters that will check the tag off the element that is collided. So we're going to use that there for now. All right, guys, so that is just going to be end of episode one. Now, it's been a short and really quick episode. We only said the ground and the player the reason being is because that's all we need to set up for the next one i want to keep these these uh lessons or episodes really short so you guys can watch them in your own time the next lesson will already be out so go check it out the link will be down below just with the patreon as well if you do want to get all the assets uh for this game you can go sign up to the patreon the link is down below uh, the next episode is going to be our character movement having him jump and i will see you in the next one don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Peace out.